I'm excited to be here with Noble McIntyre because it is McIntyre Law Monday. So of course we're at McIntyre Law and today we're talking about dog bites and things surrounding that. You know, it's it's a big time of year for this to be a concern because it's the nice time of year. People are outside with their dogs uh, and you want to go up and pet a lot of dogs sometimes. And so we have seen in the news recently, unfortunately, a, a lot of dog attacks, and a lot of dog bites. And the question is, how do we do that as a community to prevent some of that? We certainly don't want these fatalities that have been going on. I think the Oklahoma City area has had two or three just in the last six to eight months. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be talking today about the problem in general, what kind of dogs that we're facing that are doing some of this. And then once a dog bite happens, as the owner of the dog, what are some of the legal ramifications that you may experience and what do you need to be worried about and how do you get insured for that? I know everybody thinks their dog won't bite somebody, but if it does, what do you do? And then if you're the person that's bitten or injured, and because it's not just bites sometimes, sometimes somebody gets knocked down and the elderly can fall and hurt and break bones. And so what, what legal remedies do they have? And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Well, that's important. You know, I run in the morning and I right. often I come upon some dogs and, and I, I carry a big stick. Right. Uh, you know, but it's frightening. I have been bitten by a dog while running. I have the scar to prove it, well, so I know how that is. And the problem is if you're out running, whether you're male or female, if there's a pack of dogs, if there's more than two or three, how do you defend yourself against that many? What can you do to help protect yourself? And, and unless you're carrying a firearm, uh, you better have some mace or you better have something because it can be a scary, scary situation. This affects so many people. It does. Okay, so that is just ahead on McIntyre Law Monday. You can find them on the web at McIntyreLaw.com, on Twitter at McIntyreLaw, on Facebook at Oklahoma Law. Well, I'm back here at McIntyre Law with Noble McIntyre, and it is McIntyre Law Monday. We're talking about dog bites and, wow, some shocking statistics. Uh, there, there really are. You know, a lot of folks, dog lovers will tell you, and I'm a dog lover, I have two Me dogs, too. will tell you that there's no such thing as a bad dog, there's bad owners. Unfortunately, the statistics don't prove that out. What the statistics show is that out of all dog bites, 55% of them are from pit bulls and 14% from Rottweilers. So you have almost 70% of all dog bites are coming from two breeds of dogs. And some of those dogs are owned by great owners and sometimes there's just something in those dogs that snaps and they bite. And so the question is knowing that, what can we do as a community to protect ourselves and what are some of the things we need to worry about? And I will tell you that statistically, 90% of all dog bites happen from unneutered male dogs. 90%. Is that a testosterone so issue it, or you it, it have is. to wonder? And so yeah. if you have a pit bull in a Rottweiler, there's some things you can do to make sure your dog may not fall into that category and that's to get them neutered. The other unfortunate statistic is, is that 50% of all dog bite victims in the United States, half are small children. Oh, that is so frightening. And it is because for a couple of reasons. One, they're unable to defend themselves like maybe an adult male can and it's hard for an adult male. But for a little child, it's even harder. And the other thing is, they're so prone to a face attack versus an adult, which is your legs or your thighs. A child gets bit in the face mm -hmm. because they're at face level with these dogs. And so statistically, you have this problem with two specific breeds, you have them unneutered, and then you have small children that walk up and want to pet a dog. And so those are some very real problems. And here in Oklahoma City lately, we've had a couple of fatality dog bites. I've got a client that was killed. I represent the family of someone who was killed by a dog bite of a neighbor next door who had a dangerous dog. And so it's a very timely topic to be talking about right now. Yeah, it is It is a harsh reality. And you know, with children especially, I know also because they're small, often right. dogs mistake them for, you know, something like them, something to play with. So, you know, they don't really know that that isn't something well, and they can... children are used to petting dogs that are very friendly back right and so you know they don't have that experience and that fear yet that maybe you need to be careful you know as parents we teach them mm -hmm. but maybe you need to be careful so if you're a small child and all of your experience has been very pleasant and now you go to pet a dog and the dog attacks you that the child was completely unprepared for that and in the liability standpoint and we're going to talk about this in maybe one of the next segments is you know, Oklahoma is does not have the one bite rule. Some states have the one bite rule, which means that even if you have one of these dogs that may snap, you get one bite before you're really legal for it because like you didn't dog know. Dog bite mulligan? That, there, that's exactly uh -huh. right, a dog bite mulligan. Oklahoma does not have that, it's strict liability, which means if you own your dog, and we'll talk about it in a moment, and your dog bites somebody and they were unprovoked, you're going to be liable. 
And so that's something you need to worry about as, as an owner a little bit. But it's, it's, it's a very timely topic. Unfortunately, it's happening far too often. There have been a number of fatalities in this country. There's been a couple in Oklahoma. And it's just something that needs to be talked about. Yes, no, because again, so many people, you know, you're out and about, you're affected, no matter, right. no matter where you are. Yeah, well, especially this time of year, people are out biking, they're out running, they're out jogging, walking, and it can happen to anybody. I mean, so you really have to be concerned about and it. And I see dogs right in the middle of the city just running around they sometimes. Do. So it doesn't, it's not a rural issue. It's, it's an overall issue here Absolutely. in Oklahoma. Okay. Well, I'm excited to talk about that because it's something, it's information that we all need to know. And we will be back with more on this on this McIntyre Law Monday. McIntyre Law offers services to Oklahomans who have suffered personal injuries as a result of the negligence of another or a car accident. They also handle product liability claims nationwide and so much more. They're located at 8601 Southwestern Avenue here in OKC. You can call them at 405-917-5200. You can find them on the web at McIntyreLaw.com, on Twitter at McIntyre Law, on Facebook at Oklahoma Law. We are continuing McIntyre Law Monday, and we are talking about the victims of a dog bite. And I was just telling the uh, Noble here, right. Noble McIntyre, that I have a scar right here because I was bitten by a dog. And and I'm very comfortable with dogs. We raised sled dogs at my home growing up. We had teams. Uh, it was my it was one of my chores. But when I was bitten by this dog, it has changed the way I see any right. stray dog, any dog I don't know. Scare, I, I literally get panicked. It, it is a scary, scary thing. And imagine, you know, you're an adult. Imagine if you were a child mm. and, and you're bitten badly. I mean, you've got a scar on your wrist and not a lot of people see it. Imagine if it's a jagged one across your mm. face. And here's what's so unfortunate about this topic is, if you go on the website when there's a dog attacks and if it's a child and you start looking at the comments, first of all, there's a lot of crazy people out there. The people who have no compassion for the kids, there's something wrong with those folks. I mean, these little kids didn't do anything wrong. They were just petting a dog and the dog attacked them. Um, and it's a, it's a horrible, horrible deal. But from a standpoint of legal liability and legal ramifications and legal rights, what rights do people have that are bitten um, if it's somebody else's fault? And now there's a couple of things you have to know. In Oklahoma, we've talked about their strict liability. So unless you provoked the dog, then the person who owns the dog is going to be legally responsible. And pro provocation means a couple different things. It's like throwing rocks at them or poking them with sticks. That doesn't mean that you walked up and tried to pet them or a little kid walked up and grabbed its tail. Mm -hmm. You know, a kid is entitled to do that. But if it's active provocation, at that point there's a defense. But if you didn't provoke the dog and you were where you legally were entitled to be, meaning you were in a public place, a public park, you were on a sidewalk, or even if you got out of your car and you walked up to somebody's front door. So it can be, it doesn't have to be on your property. It can be in a public area you, as well. A public area. Yeah. You can even be on the property of the person who owns the dog. Mm -hmm. But if you were there as an invitee or if you were there doing nothing more than going and knocking on the door and that dog bites you, that person's going to be legally responsible. And so those are some th th things you need to know, and a lot of folks don't know that. They think that if they're on somebody else's property, if you're visiting and you're mm -hmm. in their house, that that person's not gonna have legal responsibility because you were on their property, and that's just not the case. We have a strict liability here in Oklahoma. If a dog bites you and injures you and you did not provoke them, you have legal rights. What about if they have the no trespassing or you know the dog right. signs on there? How does that play in? The no trespassing signs work if the dog is in the backyard enclosed area and it's not easily accessible. If you have to open a gate to go back there, then you're trespassing mm -hmm. unless you've been invited. If you're the cable guy and they know you're coming to check the cable box or if they're coming to install something, you're an invitee. You have a right to be there. So even if you pass the sign that says no trespassing, you are in a legal right. You have a place to be because the owner knew you were coming and they did not properly restrain their dog. And you know, in Oklahoma, a dog can be deemed a dangerous dog. And if a dog's deemed a dangerous dog, if you take them out on a leash, you have to have a muzzle in Oklahoma. And so those are very good questions. Mm -hmm. um, if a little kid goes in the backyard or if an adult goes in the backyard and they're uninvited, that will be a, a legal basis for the dog owner to say we weren't responsible. But if it's somebody like working on their equipment or something mm -hmm. like that, then they are going to be responsible. Well, and, and quickly, if, if you are bitten by a dog, you know, what are some of the things that, you know, you, you might want to seek an attorney to deal with. Right. Well, you, there's a lot of things. And one, if you're scarred, that scar is not going to go away without some scar revision. And so you're going to have to worry about that. Your medical bills, your pain and suffering aspect, dog bites often get infected. Mm -hmm. um, and so just knowing your rights and knowing how to pursue that claim. Everybody knows how to pursue a claim if you're injured in an automobile accident. The other person has insurance, you file a claim with their insurance. Mm -hmm. What do you do with a dog bite? And we're going to talk a little bit about that in the next segment from the standpoint of the claims now been made. 
uh, what does the owner do? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sorry. It's just, I, it's close to home for me, right, Noble. It really is. So the next part we all need to listen to as well, because if you own a dog, you need to know that that's all coming up on McIntyre Law Monday. McIntyre Law offers services to Oklahomans who have suffered personal injuries as a result of the negligence of another or a car accident. They also handle product liability claims nationwide and so much more. They're located at 8601 Southwestern Avenue here in OKC. You can call them at 405-917-5200. You can find them on the web at McIntyreLaw.com, on Twitter at McIntyre Law, on Facebook at Oklahoma Law. We are back with Noble McIntyre from McIntyre Law Monday. And now we are talking about if you own a dog, the dog has bitten someone, what are the repercussions? Well, you know, under Oklahoma law, the law is this. If your dog bites somebody who was in a place they were legally, uh, had a right to be, and there was no provocation, you are liable for all of the damages that stem from that. And so the question is, what are all of the damages? Well, under Oklahoma law, you're entitled the person is entitled to not only their current medical expenses related to getting treatment, but future medical expenses if they have to have things like scar vision surgery or ongoing medical, any lost wages they may have. But the biggest element is going to be the mental pain and suffering and the anguish they went through, especially if they're badly scarred. Mm -hmm. um, and so the damages can be very, very high because jurors are not friendly to this type of a case. But jurors, a lot of times, uh, maybe in a medical malpractice case, they seem to think doctors, uh, they give doctors a little more credibility and credence, but they don't like the owners of folks that bite small children. And so they often give much larger verdicts. And so you could have a very, very large verdict come from something like this or a settlement. So then the question is, well, how do you pay for that? How mm -hmm. do you defend yourself? How do you pay for your lawyer? Do you even have insurance? And the thing you need to do is get out your own homeowner's policy because some homeowner's policies will cover you for dog bites, but some homeowner's policies specifically exclude dog bites. Some policies will pay for some dogs, but exclude specific breeds of dogs. And so you need to get your policy and read it if you own a dog and find out one, are you covered? And two, if they do cover dog bites, do they cover your specific breed? And if, you, if they don't, you know, as much as I hate to say it, you need to consider either making sure your dog's not around people in that regard or getting a different breed of dog that's covered because you are opening yourself up to liability. And can you get a specific policy that may cover that, an extra policy? There, it's like everything else. You can get anything, it just costs money. Yeah. And, and you can buy a policy that will cover you for that. There's some companies that sell that, but expect to pay a lot. It's going to be expensive. And the reason it's expensive is they're not judging your dog. They're judging that breed of dog. And if you have two breeds that are biting, that are responsible for 70% of the bites, insurance companies are going to charge more for that because your dog fits into that breed. Mm -hmm. And so expect that there's going to be a claim made. Expect that if you don't have the resources to pay it, there's going to be some litigation. Expect that it's going to be expensive. And you know, look, you, you, have, a, you have a dog you're gonna have people come up to your house. You're gonna have trick-or-treaters in October. You're gonna have the Girl Scouts during Girl Scout cookie season. So what do we need to be aware of as dog owners? Well, what should we be doing? Make sure that your dog is in an area where it can't get out or can't get to people and understand that if it does, you need to protect yourself legally. And look, as a practical matter, you should want to. If your dog injures a child or injures a person who did nothing wrong and they're badly injured, you should feel an obligation to take care of that person and make sure they get the medical treatment they need. You didn't do it yourself, but a dog that you own did, and you should feel something that way. And so make sure that you're covered so that if that unfortunately happens, like I said, I own two dogs. Mm -hmm. If my dogs were to injure somebody, and they're small dogs, but if they were to injure somebody, I would feel bad. I'd want to make sure that they were covered. And so make sure you have the insurance that you need. Well, you know, and a lot of people I know say, well, I have these dogs for protection. I have right. to have them in this neighborhood or where I live. But legally... You may have them for protection for you. That's fine. But if your dog that you have for protection for you hurts somebody else, you're going to be legally responsible. Oh, so much information. Oh, we appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Noble, Noble McIntyre on McIntyre Law Monday. McIntyre Law offers services to Oklahomans who have suffered personal injuries as a result of the negligence of another or a car accident. They also handle product liability claims nationwide and so much more. They're located at 8601 Southwestern Avenue here in OKC. You can call them at 405-917-5200. You can find them on the web at McIntyreLaw.com, on Twitter at McIntyreLaw, on Facebook at Oklahoma Law. 
We are wrapping up McIntyre Law Monday with Noble McIntyre of McIntyre Law. And, you know, you're always out there in the community and right. you do so much for so many different things. And, and I know this last trip you did, it was, you got to play golf, but it was <laughs> for it was. a good cause. It was, you know, Coach Kruger down at OU does Coaches versus Cancer. It's a huge deal he does every year. They raise millions and millions of dollars for cancer research. Very near and dear subject to my heart because my best friend from high school, my college roommate, best man at my wedding, uh, died of cancer just a couple months ago. You actually interviewed yeah, him Shane, earlier this year, uh -huh. Shane Hall. And so uh, it's a big deal to me, and it's the second time I participated in that. It's it's very expensive until you realize all the money you're paying is going to cancer research. Mm -hmm. So I did it two years ago when my adopted brother T died of cancer. Did it this year with Shane dying of cancer. Uh, went out to Las Vegas, had a lot of coaches there, had a great time. And then just a couple weeks before that, I did the Pink Tie Ball, which is another cancer deal, and, and donated quite a bit of money there. So I know I usually give away the turkeys and do blood drives and coat drives, but my most recent thing uh, because of Shane's passing has been really focusing on what I can do to help donate to some of this cancer research. Well, and we love the fact that you guys, you're always giving back here Thank at McIntyre Law, and I think it's something that should inspire all of us. Thank you very much. <laughs> we do appreciate it. Again, Noble McIntyre, McIntyre Law, and we are wrapping up today's segment of McIntyre Law Monday. McIntyre Law offers services to Oklahomans who have suffered personal injuries as a result of the negligence of another or a car accident. They also handle product liability claims nationwide and so much more. They're located at 8601 Southwestern Avenue here in OKC. You can call them at 405-917-5200. You can find them on the web at McIntyreLaw.com, on Twitter at McIntyreLaw, on Facebook at Oklahoma Law.